Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new episode with me, Danny. In today's episode, we've decided to focus our attention on something new, on Google Analytics. To all of you who don't know what Google Analytics and you want to start fresh, especially with the new uh, design changes and UI uh, changes that Google Analytics rolled out um, early on in 2017, you've come to the right place. I will guide you through all the new changes and also imagine that you are starting fresh because we're going to have a different perspective on Google Analytics and try to understand it. There are many things that you probably miss when you learn Google Analytics on your own. And today I will give you the tips and the ins and outs of how you need to work with Google Analytics. It's not complex. In fact, it's very easy if you know where you're going to start. So what I've decided to do is to start this series. It's going to be around 10 or 15 episodes, um, tailored to beginners, intermediate, and then advanced. We might actually go above 15 episodes, but at least this is the vision that I have for now. Today's episode is a preliminary one. It's just to get you started with some verbiage around Google Analytics, and I'll tell you how the course will be structured. And also, you'll get to know where do you need to get into our program. So if you are pretty much in the intermediate stage, you probably uh, want to skip this part. But I still advise you, watch it, because you never know what you will learn. You might think that you know everything about Google Analytics, but sometimes there are small things that are really uh, integral and also very principal ideas that you need to understand in Google Analytics. So hang on, and I will see you right after this. Welcome back. So, today's episode, as I mentioned, is uh, just an introduction. I'll tell you how the course will be structured. To begin with, I'm calling it the ABC of Google Analytics. Why ABC? Because this is how Google Analytics pretty much uh, structures its navigation, and this is how our course will be um, structured around it. So first of all, I will talk to you about the administration of Google Analytics, a very primary and essential part of the, um, of the platform that you really need to understand. Second, the audience. So here you go, number A. Number A, again, is acquisition. So let's talk about audience just quickly. Audience is the part in Google Analytics where you will know more about your users. For example, what kind of platform do they use? What is their browser? And uh, what is the demographic? What country they came from? What are the IP ranges that belong to these users? So all of these questions that just give you some facts about your users, you will definitely find them in the audience section of Google Analytics. The acquisition uh, section of Google Analytics uh, gives you reports about um, where your users came from. So this is the part that actually precedes getting into your website. Things like um, what channels are driving users to your website, or if you have done a certain uh, promotion on YouTube or Facebook, you will know how many users got into your website from uh, these particular referrals. Uh, and also what social networks are driving more traffic. Questions like this that are essential to your business, especially if you're doing uh, paid marketing and paid advertising and you want to track uh, how many users or uh, how effective is your uh, campaign. Next, uh, the other um, section we'll delve into is the behavior. And this is, again, a very important section because behavior tells you more about your users. What are they doing once they land on your website? 
So we try to um, look into their behavior and see, for example, what pages they're visiting mostly, how uh, they are um, transcending from one page to another, what funnels they are going through, and what pages are the exit pages on your website. You probably need to know uh, those pages that are uh, driving traffic away from your website. So, questions like this, you will have the answers inside of the behavior section. So this is your B, A, B. And now, what is C? Conversion. Google Analytics have a special section that is called conversion. And conversion is essential because it really tells you if you are doing what you're supposed to do very well. It measures your goals and also it measures your successes. So by the end of the day, it shouldn't matter for you if a thousand person is on your website if they are not converting and if they are not doing what you want them to do. And this is um, linked directly to conversion. Uh, conversion could be, again, uh, multiple things. It could be landing on a particular page that you want them to see, uh, probably signing up for a newsletter or even buying from your store. If you have an e-commerce system on your website and you want to track um, what kind of products are selling the most or what campaigns are driving sales to your e-commerce uh, website, then conversion is the place to be. Moving on, we're done with ABC. Now this is real time. There is a special section in Google Analytics called real time. And it's really, um, Interesting because it shows you what's happening on your website in real time. So you get to see how many people are online. And if you have events that are triggered on your website, you will get to know who is firing these events and what kind of events are being fired. So these are the main sections that kind of um, are bundled under what Google calls reports. And these are Built-in reports. Built-in reports are something that Google has already done for you, so you don't have to do much work. And it's really good because it's kind of shortcuts that you can just get to if you know what you're looking for, but it doesn't really give you insights into what you really need to know. There are instances where your boss might ask you a very specific question and you really need to know the answer. Sometimes the answer is not as simple as going to one of these sections and figuring out the numbers, but it's more about building a report for yourself and for your company, a custom report. You could do that, obviously. There is a section as well called custom reports, and we'll talk about that once we get to that video. But custom reports are more advanced and it gives you more information from your data. It allows you to go deeper into your data, analyze it, and come up with um, different hypotheses and theories, and also drive more traffic to your website. And we'll do all that in the final part of this course in the more advanced section. But before we do all that, we need to start from the beginning for all of you beginners out there who are interested in learning each and every section of this Google Analytics program, join me in our next video. So please subscribe right now so you know every time I post a video and I will post them in this order so that you will be able to understand and learn one step at a time. It's very important that we go and progress from this point up to this point. You don't, you don't want to jump up there because most likely you will fall down. In Google Analytics, there are certain concepts that you need to understand before you do any of all this. First of all, we need to uh, clear out what is the difference between accounts, properties, and views. Accounts, properties, and views. It's very important you know the difference because this is how he determines how you start your accounts with Google Analytics. And if you do it wrong from the beginning, you will mess up all your data. Let's start with accounts. Accounts is the grand parent of all your data. So it will hold your main assets. It will hold your brands, your companies. It will hold your major domains. Think of it this way. If you have three websites, website one would go under 
an account, website two would go under, under, under another account, and website three would go under a third account. Properties describe specifics within each of these uh, accounts or of these domains. For example, you might have your main domain www.webock.com as one property and then you might have another property which is a subdomain such as news.webock.com. Your third property might actually be something completely different uh, but again within the same uh, domain. And this is important because that tells you how your data is going to be collected. Data gets collected into properties. So, if you want all your data about www.webock.com and news.webock.com to be under one bucket of data, then you need to put them together in the same property. Don't split them. So it really depends on how you want to look at your data. If you don't care that they are separate, because you're going to probably send a link to uh, a report to, uh, to some person here and send another report and they're really independent, then you probably want to keep them separate. But if your data is coherent and people seamlessly go from one domain or from one subdomain to another, then you, you probably want to bucket them together under one property and there will be a special video uh, to tell you how you can manage uh, the reporting when you have multiple subdomains under one property. Moving on to the third section which is the views. Views is important and it's also the easiest. Views is pretty much uh, how you want your data to be uh, displayed and uh, the best practice in Google Analytics is to create three views for every property. A view which we call the unfiltered and that will hold your raw data unfiltered, no changes to it, whatever comes up from Google Analytics goes directly into this view. The second view is the master view and that includes some of the customizations that you might have introduced throughout the years because you want a special view to your data. For example, you don't want to include uh, your employees so there are certain IPs from your company that have been excluded from the reporting and this we call the master view. The third is a staging view or a test view or a sandbox view. A view that you can use for all your experiments. You probably want to try a different filter one day and you probably don't want to go directly to the master view and make changes to it because what if it messes up the reporting? What if you have implemented this particular filter in a wrong way? Well, you better do it in the test view, experiment, give it a day or two, and if everything is working fine as, as expected, then you probably have done it right. You can go ahead now and make the same change in your master view and be safe than sorry. So this is the main thing you have to make, uh, you have to understand very well, is accounts, properties, and views. The second one, and that's what got me confused long, long time ago, is the difference between uh, dimensions and metrics. There, there are these two terms that get used too many times in Google Analytics, and there is not a very clear uh, or let me put it this way, there's not a very easy way of explaining it, but I'll try to make it easy. Think of it this way. Dimensions are um, different classes or different types of things that you want to measure. And if you want to know what a dimension is, it's simply a string. For example, countries are considered to be a dimension because you have all the different countries. Another example of dimensions is um, your user browsers. For example, whether it's Chrome, Firefox, Safari, each one of these is bucketed under the dimension of browser. Again, it's because it's a string, it's literally text. So if something is text, it's a dimension. Metrics, on the other hand, are nothing but numbers. Metrics are generally uh, the number of views, 
or the number of visits, the number of users. Again, this is a, a number. It could be 100. It could be 1,000. Or it's a percentage. It could be the uh, goal conversion rate on your website. Goal conversion could be 10%, could be 20%. If it's in the 20%, you're probably rich by now. But you got the point. It's, again, a numeric. Everything numeric is called a metrics. And you have a lot of metrics around Google Analytics. Actually, Google Analytics is based on metrics and dimensions. You generally select a dimension, a primary dimension. For example, uh, let's say the uh, your user browsers. And then you have a list of all the different browsers. That's column one, generally in a tabular form. And then all the other columns would include, all the cells would literally include metrics. This particular browser got so many visits or got a conversion rate of 10% or what else? Numbers. This is how Google Analytics pretty much works around this tabular form. Above the table, you generally have a graph that shows the same numbers in a visual representation. Um, I think these are the two main sections that you need to uh, really grasp before you get into any of the details of reporting and analysis in Google Analytics. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe because we are starting this fresh new series and I will ensure that you learn each and everything about Google Analytics. And remember, if you have any questions, please put them in the links below, uh, in the comments below, and I'll try to add some links to more useful information. And also, subscribe to webawk.com. Get a free account because in the near future, I will be publishing uh, some of the advanced videos directly to you guys. I will not probably have everything on YouTube. So uh, go ahead and subscribe. It's our community and let's get to it. Let's learn Google Analytics if you don't know it. I'm very excited to start this new series. Have a great day and see you in the next video.